In this video, we'll see how to take a system of two differential equations, first order equations, and two unknown functions and uh, combine them to put the system in to matrix form. So what we're looking at here, we have, we have two variables x1 and x2, um, each of which are functions of time. So let me indicate that. x1 is x1 of t and x2 is x2 of t. So because they're, uh, well, before I go on to that, let's say that what we'll do is we'll construct a vector, um, x, which is actually x of t. I won't indicate that. Um, the two components of x will be x1 and x2. And what we want to keep in mind is that x1 and x2 are functions of time, so the, ver the vector x itself is a function of time. Now, because we can, uh, x1 and x2 are functions of time, we can take their derivatives with respect to time. So I could look at a vector that contained the derivative of x1 and the derivative of x2 as, as its components, and we'll call that vector um, x prime. Now, um, in addition, let's consider a matrix A and let's let A be the matrix whose entries, it'll be a 2 by 2, its entries will be 5, negative 2, 1, and 3. And we can see that if we take A times the vector x, okay, what we get is we have 5, negative 2, 1, 3, times the vector x1, x2, and the result, of course, is another vector. And the first component of that is 5x1 minus 2x2. And the second component is x1 plus 3x2. And so we can see that that matrix, or that vector, excuse me, it's a vector, it just has two components, that if we look back at the system of equations, um, it appears there where I've boxed it in red. So we want to keep in mind that that portion of those equations is um, in fact then uh, the result of multiplying the matrix A by x1, x2. So let's go on and, and take a look now at how we can use these ideas to turn that system of equations um, into a matrix equation. So if we go on here we can see that um, this x1 and x2, if I was to simply put uh, brackets around it, that would be our x prime, our, our vector x derivative. This part here was a times x, and then we'll make this into another vector here. So once we do that, we can see what we have is uh, this first vector is simply x prime. This part, the second part, um, was the matrix A, which is 5, negative 2, 1, 3, times the vector x, whose components were x1 and x2. And then we're going to take this last part, and let me just write it for now as a vector containing the functions e to the t and negative t. Okay, but we'll rewrite that last vector as um, a vector f of t. So this is really a function of t. So let me write it using vector notation. So there's some f of t, which is represented by that, mate, that vector. Um, and then back here we still have the same things. We have the derivative of x vector times the matrix A, 5, negative 2, 1, 3, not times, equals, um, times the vector x. Okay, so we could also write this as um, x prime equals ax, where a is again the matrix 5, negative 2, 1, 3, um, plus f and we can leave the t off if we want, as long as we understand what the independent variable is. 
Um, so that is the vector form of our system of equations where f is the vector above with the e to the t and the minus t in it. A is the matrix. X is our vector of um, unknown functions. Now, if we take a look up here, uh, let's go up to our initial conditions, which I'm boxing in blue here. And we can see that we could create a, a, a vector um, whose components were x1 of 0 and x2 of 0. My apologies for the writing. Let's see if we can fix that. We've got x1 of 0 and x2 of 0. So that vector has to be equal to 4, negative 1. Okay, and we can rewrite that then um, as uh, the vector x evaluated at time 0 equals 4, negative 1, which I'll just denote by c, meaning constant vector. So this guy. Um, will be the, the vector C. So here we've got our entire initial value problem now written in matrix form.